Hi, I'm Amy Elliott. I'm a therapist and I'm part of the sermon writing team here at Newbreak and I'm so glad that you joined for this midweek moment. This is our opportunity to dig deeper into the message that we heard over the weekend. And so we've been in a series out of James uh, and last week we looked at James 4 and we talked about conflict and how do we navigate relational conflict God's way. Conflict is going to happen. If you are in contact or relationship with anybody, you're going to have differences of opinion and conflict will absolutely arise. And so how do we do this conflict in a way that's healthy and pleasing to the Lord? And James tells us the first thing we have to start with is humility. Humility means quieting myself, my own desires, my needs in order to honor yours quieting myself, my own desires, and my own needs, what I really want, in order to honor yours. And that place of humility is really hard to be in when conflict is happening, because we all know that feeling. It escalates, escalates, and we just, we want to come out with it, right? And James is saying, hold on, slow down, right? Figure out what's actually going on so that you can decide what you want to do with it. We talk a lot in therapy about the difference between responding and reacting. Uh, I react when the feeling comes, and let me tell you, you can't control your feelings. You're going to have the feeling. It comes, and I react by just, ooh, I come right back at you. I send it right back out. Versus responding, where I have the feeling, anger, hurt, sad, whatever it is, and instead I sit for a second and I allow myself to decide how I want to behave. I choose how I'm going to reply, how I'm going to respond to you, rather than just have it come as a reaction. I don't want it to be that way because when we just act out of that, we tend to just go in these cycles, these never-ending cycles. And the truth of the matter is, we're often fighting about things that aren't actually the problem. When I have uh, people in counseling, when I have couples in counseling, I describe to them that we have these conflict cycles and there's this imaginary line that runs through the middle of the cycle. And above the line is kind of the thing that you're fighting about, right? And below the line is really where the magic happens. And so at the bottom, at the core, there's this need that we have from the other person that any time that's threatened or hurt or, or, or just kind of shaken at all, we're going to get into the conflict cycle. And so I tell women that mostly, and this isn't always true at all, but usually their core need is somewhere in the neighborhood of, I need to know I matter. I need to know I'm a priority. So let's put this into a, a premarital context, right? Or postmarital, we got a newly married couple and she says to the husband, could you just wipe the crumbs off the counter? Sure, no problem. The next day comes, there's crumbs on the counter. Could you, could you just wipe those crumbs off the counter? Sure, no problem. Day three, just wipe the crumbs off the counter, right? And the guy's like, yeah, no problem. By day five, she loses it. And he's thinking, oh my gosh, chill. These are flipping crumbs. But we know that she said the crumbs mattered to her. And if her need was, I need to know I matter, and she said those mattered, and he's not making them matter to him, what she hears is, I don't matter to you. And so she's not fighting about the crumbs at all. She's fighting about mattering to him, about him making these things that are important to her a priority to him. And usually for men, and again, there's nothing uh, hard and fast about this, their core need is somewhere in the, I need to know you've got my back. I need to know you think I can do it. And so when uh, we comment on their driving or how they're fixing something, they react very strongly, but it's not about that. If uh, other people have had maybe some wounding in childhood and there's a fear of you're going to leave me and you come home 10 minutes late and you can't figure why, out why your spouse is so mad at you, they're not fighting about the 10 minutes late. They're fighting about the fear that you're going to leave me. And so we have to be careful when we're in conflict that we don't just focus on the thing because the thing is not usually what it's about. That instead we try to slow, quiet our own desires and needs, right, to honor the other person. That's humility. Our goal as Christ followers is to further the kingdom of God. That's our goal. And so if we find ourselves in conflict with someone else, our new goal is not to win the conflict. Our goal is still to further the kingdom of God. And so we have to be careful 
with how we interact with people. What usually happens is someone says something, this person receives it, uh, figures out what they're trying to say, and responds to it. What that means is it does not matter at all what this person said. It matters what this person heard, <laughs> right? And so if you say something and the person doesn't react like you would have expected them to, I'm telling you they did not hear what you thought you said. If someone that you know that has a good heart and wouldn't mean to hurt you says something that's painful, you probably didn't hear what they meant. And so in both of those situations, it's important to slow down and say, hey, ouch, that hurt. Is that what you meant? Or when they have a big reaction to slow and try again, right? Because if we really are furthering the kingdom of God, then we're doing that uh, both relationally, the people that we know, but it's also anyone we're in conflict with, right? The hallmarks of the kingdom of God are love, peace, mercy, grace. So those need to be peppered throughout our conversation all of the time. When I come home, is that how I'm treating the people in my life? And when I'm even not in relationship with them, but in conflict with them, we know during this election season, it's all over my Facebook post, right? People will say, I don't mean to be mean, but, and then they say something scathing. And so regardless of where you think Jesus would fall on a certain political issue, your question for yourself is, in the way I respond, am I promoting conflict or am I promoting peace? Are all the words that are coming out of my mouth, even if I don't agree with you, are they filled with love? Are they filled with peace? Are they filled with mercy? Are they filled with grace? If they are, we're going to get to a place of understanding. But if they're not, I guarantee we will stay in conflict. And so as we approach this week, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to think of a person that you are in conflict with. And like I said, this can be a person like the you know, or it can be a grouping of people that you have differing views from, or that you have started this back and forth on social media with. Just think of someone that you are in conflict with. And I want you to practice humbling yourself. If you were to quiet yourself and seek to honor them, instead of your own needs and desires, what would that look like? If you were really serious about being a peacemaker in this world, if we wanted the kingdom, God's kingdom come as it is in heaven on earth, if we wanted to do that as Christ followers, I want to challenge you. Look for ways to love, to spread peace, to always have mercy, and to always show grace. When you get in conflict with someone, I want you to pray for them this week. I want you to pray that God would change your heart and would soften theirs as well. When we start to see people as God's creation, it softens us, it changes us. God made them. It's harder to be in conflict with people when we see how much their father loves them. And so that's my challenge for you. Wherever you're in conflict, no matter how deep it is, look to spread the kingdom and to do it through love and only doing it with the help of the Father who can enable you to do so.